Hey, this is Stan Prokopenko with Proko. It's time for our last two back muscles, the trapezius and rhomboideus. Trapezius. From the front, it looks like a trapezoid shape, which is how it got the name trapezius. From the back, however, it looks more like a kite or a spinning top. Remember learning about the shoulder girdle way back in the bone lessons? I hope so, because you'll need to be familiar with the scapula and clavicle for today's lesson. As you can see, the trapezius originates along the path of the spine and inserts along the top of the shoulder girdle. That means it attaches to the spine of the scapula, the acromion process, and the clavicles. You can probably guess what it does, right? Exactly! The trapezius moves the shoulders for things like shrugging, or, well, anything with your shoulders, really. The trapezius doesn't just raise your shoulders. It anchors above and below the shoulder blades, so it pulls the scapula closer to the spine and helps lower it too. A good indicator of the function is the direction of the muscle fibers. As you can see, the fibers of the trapezius pull in many different directions. It's a pretty complicated muscle. Let's simplify it a bit by splitting it into a diamond-shaped tendon in the middle and three distinct portions around it. Upper, middle, and lower portions. Let's look at them in depth. The upper portion. The upper portion is that trapezoid shape visible from the front of the body. It originates from the base of the skull, along the nuchal ligament, and the seventh cervical vertebra which is that bony landmark on the back of your neck. However, the muscle fibers don't reach all the way to the midline. They attach to a flat, diamond-shaped tendon, which is centered around the seventh cervical vertebra. The upper portion of the trapezius attaches to the top half of this diamond shape. The fibers flow downward and laterally to insert on the lateral third of the clavicles, as well as the acromion process. Sometimes the upper portion will also insert to a small part of the spine of the scapula. You can see here how the fibers twist around to insert on the clavicle in the front, and again in a front view. The function of the upper portion is to elevate the scapula. But if the scapulas are fixed, then the trapezius moves the head. When one side flexes, it tilts the head sideways. When both sides flex together, they flex the neck to bring the head back. The middle portion. The middle portion continues where the upper portion left off. It originates along the spine from T1 to T5 and reaches across the back to insert on the top plane of the spine of the scapula. The muscle fibers attach to the bottom half of that diamond-shaped tendon. On a muscular or a lean person, the insertion along the scapula is quite dramatic. Well, maybe not that dramatic. The muscle ends abruptly, so it bulges out above the insertion and clearly outlines the spine of the scapula. It's one of the most recognizable features of the trapezius. The muscle fibers of the middle portion are pulling more horizontally, from the spine out to the scapula. So when this portion is flexed, it retracts the scapula inward, pulling it toward the spine. The lower portion. The lower portion is the tail of the trapezius. It originates along the spine from T6 to T12, which is the lowest thoracic vertebra. The fibers go upward laterally to insert on the spine of the scapula again, but this time along the bottom edge. There's a triangular tendon here that wraps over the supraspinatus. The muscle fibers attach in an arc, so on the surface, the muscle has a sharp C curve here. It almost looks like someone removed the chunk with an ice cream scoop. There's another triangular tendon at the bottom of the tail. Notice the W shape at the bottom of the tail? Each side of the trapezius will have its own tail since it's the muscle part that bulges on the surface. Even though the tendon attaches all the way at T12, 
visually on the surface, it will appear to end earlier. When flexed, this lower portion will pull the scapula downward to lower the shoulder. The rhomboid. Like the trapezius, the rhomboideus, also known as rhomboid, is named after its shape. Unlike the trapezius, the rhomboid is very simple. It's layered under the trapezius, so its form is softened. However, the rhomboid is thick enough that it shows through on the surface, so we definitely need to study it. Let's take a look. It originates on the spine from the fourth or fifth thoracic to the seventh cervical, and also on the nuchal ligament for the distance of one more vertebra. It reaches downward diagonally to insert on the medial edge of the scapula. You can see its rhombus-like shape. So notice how its direction of pull in this area is perpendicular of the trapezius. The trapezius pulls this way and the rhomboid pulls this way. This crossing of the muscles can create some complexity on the surface and changes the way it looks depending on the articulation of the pose. But knowing how to track the muscles from origin to insertion will help us dissect what we're seeing. The rhomboid works with the upper portion of the trapezius to elevate the scapula for that shrugging motion. It also medially rotates the scapula and hugs it tight against the rib cage. Aww. Not that kind of hugging. Aww. But mainly, the rhomboid retracts the scapula, pulling it back toward the spine. That's a lot of responsibility for a muscle most people don't know about. Maybe that's why rhomboids can get really thick. Bruh, my rhomboids are so swole. We'll learn about the forms in the next lesson, as I show you how to draw the upper back. See you next time. So we have a premium section for students that want to learn more. The premium section has extended lessons with more information about the topic. It also has additional drawing demonstrations. If you do the assignments for each lesson, these demonstrations serve as the answers for the assignment, so you can check your work. There's an ebook version of each lesson that you can download as a PDF. Print them out or keep them on your device so you can quickly review the lessons. And finally, the premium section has 3D models that you can spin around, study, and draw from any angle. If you don't want your drawings to look like this, go to proco.com anatomy. If you like this video, don't be all selfish. Share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button or go to proco.com slash subscribe. Bro, my rhomboids are so swole. Bro, my rhomboids are so swole. Bro, my rhomboids are so swole.